Hey there, my name is Steve, and today I'm going to show you how to use Pinata's IPFS API. Pinata has been the leading IPFS provider in the last five years, and we have mastered the art of making IPFS simple, easy, fast, and secure. So in this video, we'll show you how to use our IPFS API, which will allow you to upload and retrieve files. And even though we're going to be doing this demo in TypeScript, you can actually use this in any language you want since it is an API. So with that said, if you are going to be using TypeScript, you may want to go ahead and subscribe and follow for our video that will be on how to use the TypeScript SDK, which is much easier to use. Now, IPFS is primarily used for Web3 applications. If you're not really looking to build that and you just want traditional file storage, you may want to check out our other video on how to use the Files API. You can check the link down in the bio. So with that, let's get started. All right, so to start using the IPFS API, the first thing you're going to need is a Pinata account. You can go to app.pinata.cloud, sign up for a free account. Super easy. Once we're inside the app, we're going to grab two things. We're going to grab an API key and we're going to grab our gateway URL. So to get an API key, just click on the API keys tab over here. Click new key. I'd recommend just give it a name like API or something like that or tutorial. I'm going to check the admin scopes and I'm going to leave this untoggled. Once you click generate API key, it's going to give you three keys. It's going to give you an API key, API key secret, and then a JWT, which is a bit longer. We're primarily going to use the JWT, but feel free to save all those and keep them somewhere safe. I'm going to do that now, and I'll be back in just a second. Now, once you have your API key made, let's get the gateway URL. If you click on the gateways tab here, you're going to see that you're going to already have a dedicated gateway URL already generated. Dedicated gateways are Pinata's way to access IPFS information super fast and very quick, loaded with all sorts of really good features. So if you're going to be building Web3 applications, you definitely want to have this. So we're going to go ahead and copy this URL as is. I'm going to put it with where my API keys are and get into the next bit. All right, so now we have all of our keys ready. Let's go ahead and start using the IPFS API. I went ahead and made a starter repo with all sorts of basic API scripts ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and open my terminal. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here for you. And I'm just going to put this on my desktop. And we're going to go ahead and clone the repo. It's going to be git clone github.com slash pinata cloud. And it's going to be IPFS API starter. Just go ahead and clone. And then we're going to go ahead and CD into that. Now for this demo, I'm using bun. If you want to use another compiler like uh, Dino or Node, etc. You could do that. These are TypeScript files. I found Bun is kind of the easiest way to run those files, and the way it interacts with file objects is actually very simple as well. So if you haven't used Bun yet, highly recommend you check it out. Uh, since I have Bun ready to go and it's all set up for this repo, I can just run Bun install. It's going to install all the dependencies I need, and we're all set. At this point, you can go ahead and open up the code base in your code editor of choice, whether it's VS Code or something else. I personally love Zed, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up here. And the first thing we're going to go ahead and get to is the .env.example. This is going to be the API key and gateway URL where you're going to store them, and it keeps them secure. So what you want to do is go ahead and rename this file. And we're just going to rename it from .env.example to just .env. Now it's grayed out, so it's going to be hidden from our git commits in the future. And you just go ahead and paste in that JWT that was really long and then the gateway URL here. I'm going to do that now and I'll be right back. All right, so now we've got our API key saved and ready to go. Let's go ahead and open up the first script on how to upload a file to IPFS. I'm going to go to uploadfile.ts here. And you can see here it's going to use uh, several different things. The API is designed to use either read streams or file API objects from the web API files. So we just go ahead and construct one here. And I've just put in some text like hello world. And we're going to give it a name hello.txt. And once you do that, all you have to do is create a new form data. And we're going to append it with the field file. And we just add that file to the request. And that's all you need to really upload file to IPFS. It is that simple. Now there's some optional things you can add here that kind of you know, enhance the use of the IPFS API. So the first one is going to be Pinata metadata. So this Pinata metadata allows you to attach a custom name apart from the file name. So instead of hello.txt, you could put my cool file or something like that. It also includes key values. These are extra pieces of information you can save about your file, and it can be very useful to add extra context or attach maybe user IDs. It really helps enhance your application and do a lot of stuff that you normally would need a database for. So pretty cool to have. If you're going to use the metadata, you basically create a stringified object 
and attach to the form with the field pinata metadata. Now the other option we have here is options, pinata options. And here you can change the CID version. By default, the API is going to be using V0, but if you want to use version one instead, you could just designate CID version, put one instead. And you could also do group IDs. Uh, groups are, is a feature by Pinata that allows you to group your IPFS files. It's really handy if you're doing Web3 applications like NFT projects and you want to group your NFT projects together. So highly recommend you check that out. But once you have your request all ready to go, it's just going to be the URL api.pinata.cloud slash pinning pin file to IPFS. We're going to do a method of post. And for the headers, all we're going to use is our authorization header where we have bear followed by or JWT, which we're processing from our secret. And then you're gonna attach the body of the request here. And once we run that request, we're going to parse the response and log it out. So let's go ahead and run it now. I'm gonna open up my terminal. I'm gonna go bun upload file.ts. And there we go, we can see our file here. We have the IPFS hash right here, all set to go. Now, if we wanted to create an IPFS URL or a way to access this file, we have a folder or a file right here called create IPFS URL, and it's gonna do two things. First thing is gonna use API request to just fetch the latest file and get the CID for the file that we just saw a minute ago. So no matter what you upload or what you do when you're following this thing, you can just run this, it's gonna work. And what we're gonna do is we're going to get that latest file and we're gonna get the IPFS hash or CID, same thing. We're gonna get that IPFS hash and then we can actually put together a URL. So right here, we're going to use the dedicated gateway, which is, you know, random string dot my pinata dot cloud. And we're processing that from our secrets as well, slash IPFS, then CID. Now you could also use this, a public gateway, which I've done here. So IPFS.io is a very popular public gateway where you can access files. So there's IPFS.io slash IPFS, followed by the CID. So let's go ahead and run this one. Open up the terminal, we're going to do bun, create, IPFS URL, and you see we've got two URLs here. One is going to be this first one from our dedicated gateway. We can curl that. It's going to request the content. You can see it's going to put out hello world. That's the contents of our file. Um, but we can also use this one. Do curl. Here we go. Also comes back hello world. Same content, and it's because it's on that peer-to-peer -peer IPFS network where you can access it either through public gateways or your own dedicated private gateway. Now something we used here is the ability to list files. So let's look at that. List files here. This allows you to list all the files in your account and use different queries to find something in particular. So just going over a couple of those, uh, one of them that we have here is going to be uh, metadata. So if we wanted to search by name, you could do that through here. It's going to be metadata, put in the name, and then equals, you know, hello.txt. You could also do groups. So if you wanted to search by groups, if you uploaded your files into a group for like an NFT project, you could list all your files based on a certain group ID. Very handy here. We also have mime type. If you want to do different types of files, the contents of what's inside. If you want to filter by CID, you can do that here as well. And we can also set a page limit for how many are returned. And if you wanted to paginate through, we have something called page offset. So if you request 100 files, you want the next 100 files, you can add page offset, the number, and then bam, you're done. So in this file, we basically take all of our query parameters, put them into a string, and we append it to this base URL, which is api.pinata.cloud slash data slash pin list. We attach those queries, and then we just make a get request, and we're going to use our same authorization scheme, the bear followed by the JWT and then we parse out the response and log it out. So as always, let's go ahead and run that now. We're gonna bun list files, and there we go. We get back a array. We have our first file here, and this is that file that we just uploaded. We get the CID, when it was uploaded, our metadata, things like that. Now I mentioned groups just a minute ago. Let's go ahead and take a bigger look at those. Groups are a really great way to organize your files, and they're really easy to use with the IPFS API. So first, we're gonna go ahead and create a group. We're going to do that by creating a uh, JSON payload with requests. So we do a data equals JSON.stringify. All we have to include is the name of the group. That's literally all we need to create a group. And then we're going to send a request. We're going to do api.pinata cloud slash groups. We're going to do a post request. 
And we're going to add a content type of application slash JSON since we're sending a JSON body. We have our authorization header and we have the data itself that we're sending. And we're going to go ahead and parse out the response like we always do. So let's do bun create group.ts. And there we go. We just created our group. And we can see here we have the ID or user ID, name, and update and created at. Pretty cool. Now that we have a group, we could upload files on upload. Or if we wanted to add files after the fact, we can do that too. So if you go to the add to group.ts, we're going to do a couple things in this file. First request we're going to make is to get uh, all of our groups that we've created. And I'm just going to get the first group in the list, or really our only group at this point, and I'm going to get the ID. And then I'm going to fetch the contents or the CID of a file. So to do that, I'm going to use that pin list endpoint we used earlier. And I'm just going to grab the first file on the list. I'm going to grab the IPFS hash. And then I'm going to create a payload or JSON payload. And in here is going to be an array of CIDs. So if you wanted added more than one CID at a time, you could do that here. I'm just going to add this one CID that we pulled from our latest files, put it right here. And then I'm going to make the request. So here we would do API to open out a cloud, groups, and then we're going to have the group ID and then put CIDs after that. And this is going to be a put request. We're going to have the content type of application slash JSON, authorization header, and our body. And then once we send that request, we're going to get an OK status back if it's successful. So let's give it a shot now. We're going to do bun add to group.ts. And there we go. OK, now it's part of that group. And if we wanted to query by that group, we could do that. Now, one final note I'll put in here is that this is only the surface level of the basics of our API. So if you want all the details on how to use every single piece, highly recommend you check out our documentation at docs.pinata.cloud. If you go here and then click on API reference, scroll down a little bit, and you're going to have the IPFS API down here. And this is going to be all the different things you can do with our API in regards to our IPFS product. So whether it's pin file to IPFS, or if you want to pin a raw JSON body, you can do that. Listing files, creating groups, getting group information, updating groups, all of it is here. And, you know, we our reference is really clean. It has all the different ways you can add stuff, all the details, as well as different languages. So if you're not going to be using TypeScript, then you can check out Python, PHP, Go, or Java. Well, that's a wrap for our video on how to use the IPFS API. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And until next time, happy pitting.